from the gallery overlooking the floor of the House of Representatives in Washington, D.C. On this 17th day of February, 1801, the members of the House are about to try again to elect a President of the United States. Soon they will take the 36th ballot and hope this time to break the six-day deadlock between Jefferson and Aaron Burr. Jefferson is still one state short of the required nine-state majority, and unless he's elected on this 36th ballot, the events of the past few days indicate that violence and bloodshed will descend on this infant capital. The 16 tellers appointed by the Speaker of the House will poll their states. Then they will drop the vote in the two ballot boxes provided by the Sergeant at Arms. The vote Washington, reported to February 17th, 1801. The, Federal the House of Representatives, you are there. CBS takes you back 147 years. It is less than a generation since the end of the revolution which established the United States of America. It's 2.30 p.m. on Sunday, October 31st, 1948. We're tuned into WCBS in New York. On the air is You Are There. Created by Goodman Ace, it blended history with modern technology, taking an entire network newsroom back in time. On Halloween in 1948, the episode centered around the U.S. presidential election of 1800. 1801, the gallery of the House of Representatives and John Daly. This dramatic deadlock has come about in spite of the fact that Jefferson received the majority of the popular vote. A group of willful men in the Federalist Party, losers in the popular vote, are still trying desperately to block the people's choice. A tie in the Electoral College through this election into the House of Representatives, and here the Federalists are still hoping to elect Aaron Burr when he was meant to be Jefferson's running mate on the successful Democratic-Republican ticket. They think of Aaron Burr a lesser evil than Thomas Jefferson. And now, on the 36th ballot, they're still pushing... The first U.S. election to have formally nominated party tickets. It pitted Democratic-Republicans Thomas Jefferson and Aaron Burr against the incumbent Federalists, John Adams and Charles Pinckney. At the time, the tickets made no distinction between the president and vice president. The man with the most votes would win. The campaigning was bitter. Mr. Speaker, we have been confined to this hall for six days. We're like prisoners, eating here, sleeping here, going about in our nightcaps, never permitted to go to our hearts and homes. Why must we have further delay? The Federalist Party had split down the middle. Some supported John Adams. Some supported the point of view of Alexander Hamilton. Federalists won the New England states, while Democratic Republicans easily carried the South, and the party split New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. Jefferson and Burr won the popular vote, but both received 73 electorates, creating the need for a contingent election in the House of Representatives. Congressman from Delaware, and it has been rumored in this rumor-ridden capital that Alexander Hamilton, leader of the Federalists and a bitter foe of Thomas Jefferson, is nevertheless urging Bayard... Northern Federalist Congressman back Burr, a New Yorker. Southern Democratic Republican Congressman back Jefferson. With the first 35 ballots deadlocked, Alexander Hamilton, who did not see eye to eye with either Jefferson or Burr, convinced several Federalists to switch their support to Jefferson getting him elected as the third president of the United States. Even in the early 1800s, both geographic and party divides were fierce. So we take you now to Richmond, Virginia, Jack Walters reporting. I'm in the executive office of Governor James Monroe. The roll of drums and the bugle you can hear are coming from the great courtyard below. The Virginia militia has been assembling down there since early this morning. I guess that there are about a thousand men here, fully outfitted for a long march. On Halloween 1948, the office of the president is on everyone's mind. Tuesday, November 2nd, will be the 41st presidential election in U.S. history. Democrat incumbent Harry Truman will be running against New York's governor and Republican Thomas Dewey. Truman is a massive underdog. South Carolina's governor, Strom Thurmond, is running a separate Dixiecrat ticket. And another FDR VP, Henry Wallace, is the Progressive Party's nominee. I've been in touch with Governor McKean of Pennsylvania. His militia, too, is fully armed and ready. We are prepared to march troops instantly upon the Capitol for the purpose not of promoting, 
but at preventing revolution and the shedding of a single drop of blood. But, Governor, there are rumors that some 1,500 Democrats from Virginia and Maryland threaten to assassinate anyone who takes the presidency. Less than three years after Jefferson was elected, their hatred bubbling over, Aaron Burr shot and killed Alexander Hamilton in a duel in Weehawken, New Jersey. Burr was at the time still the vice president of the United States. There have been reports of Alexander Hamilton's ghost ever since. Tonight, we'll find out what other ghosts were floating through the air on October 31st, 1948. Welcome to Breaking Walls, episode 108. My name is James Scully. Tonight on Breaking Walls, we go back to October 31st, 1948, and open a five-part miniseries on that season's business and programming. If this is your first time listening to Breaking Walls, welcome to the show. You can find this series on every podcasting platform and at thewallbreakers.com. Tonight's opening theme song, is Dance Macabre, Opus 40, written and composed in 1874 by Camille saint saëns The tone poem tells the story of death, who every year on Halloween calls forth the dead from their graves to dance until the rooster crows at dawn. Join the Breaking Walls Facebook group to keep in touch with news, snippets, photos, and other additions to the podcast at facebook.com slash groups slash the wallbreakers. Burning Gotham, the new historical fiction audio drama set in 1835 in New York City, is on its way. Go to burninggotham.com for new teasers and more information. You can also support these shows for as little as $1 per month at patreon.com slash thewallbreakers. 